2000 Toyota RAV4 VSV for the EGR valve. Check the pinned comment or the description for the timestamps. Also check those places for a link to another video I'll put up, which is a full EGR system troubleshooting and diagnostic video. Here is the Toyota part number and the ASIN part number for the VSV and the approximate prices. In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove the VSV from its original location and how to bench test it. Then I'm going to show you how to install it in a much more convenient location. Up next is the VSV failure diagnosis and some simple in-place testing of the VSV. The repair starts at about the nine minute mark. Because of the position of the VSV on the RAV4, it's very difficult to reach. It's down here bolted way on the back of the block. A lot of people do not remove the VSV if they suspect that it's failed. They don't bench test it, they just leave it in place. They pull the vacuum hoses off it, disconnect the electrical on it, and move it to a new location on the firewall. You'll see all that in this video. But I do wanna mention that there is a way to test the VSV. It's not a perfect test, but it's better than nothing and you don't have to remove it. Um, you can do it all from the top here and it's very easy. So we'll step through those real quick. So this device is called the vacuum modulator. This device is called the EGR valve. The way the EGR system works in the RAV4, you can check out my other video for a very detailed explanation of it. But basically vacuum originating at the throttle body uh, ends up over here at the vacuum modulator. Depending on the conditions in the vacuum modulator, that vacuum will end up on this hose this hose goes through the VSV, and if the VSV is energized, it will not let the vacuum make it over here to the to the EGR valve, so the EGR valve will not open. If the um, VSV is not energized, it will allow the vacuum to make it all the way over here to the EGR valve, and the EGR valve will lift. So that's why the VSV is um, often a, the solution to a P0401 or P0402, because it's the only electronic component in the circuit. The rest of the stuff is all just mechanical. And it's possible for it to fail either way, and it will either interrupt the vacuum when it shouldn't or allow vacuum when it shouldn't. So we'll disconnect this hose here with the yellow band on it from the Q port of the vacuum modulator. So I'm just going to call this the yellow hose because it has a yellow band. Then if we go over to the vacuum or to the EGR valve, we'll disconnect this hose, which has a white band. So I'll just call this the white hose. And as, um, as you know, because we just went through it, these hoses go into the VSV. So if we follow this down, which you'll see later in the video, this hose goes into one side of the VSV, this hose goes into the other side of the VSV. So to do this first test, have the key out of the ignition. It's very important that the key is out of the ignition. And what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we cannot sustain vacuum all the way across this circuit when we put vacuum on this yellow hose. So we'll leave this white hose open, just leave the white hose open just like that and bring in the hand pump and we'll just put the hand pump right here onto the yellow hose and we want to see that we can't hold vacuum so here we go you see I can't hold vacuum across there and that's good What's that's, what that is telling us is that the EGR uh, VSV is acting properly right now because what it's doing is it's in the non-energized state and in that state it's going to allow vacuum to reach all the way over to the EGR valve. So if we have this open, that we're, we're venting that. So we can't sustain vacuum. So as you would guess, then if we cover this, so if I just have the same setup and I just cover the white hose, I should be able to hold vacuum. And you can see there that it is holding vacuum. So this is the proper test results for when the uh, key is out of the ignition. The VSV should not be energized, and so when it's not energized, it should allow all the vacuum on the yellow band to make it over to the white band. When I release my finger, you'll see we'll lose the vacuum. So if you do this test and you see that you, uh, right away, right off the bat, if you do this test with this open, so you do the first one we just did, and you can hold vacuum, so you get vacuum on here, that's a VSV failure. The reason is because that means that that VSV failed in, in the energized state, even if it's not energized. It failed in that state. There's a solenoid inside and they can fail in different positions. So that is pretty much a surefire VSV fail. In that case, you're going to want to get a new VSV. Now, if you do the second test and you are not able to hold vacuum, let's say you apply vacuum, but it keeps leaking and leaking. That's uh, either a failure of one of these two hoses. You could have a big vacuum leak in this hose or a big vacuum leak in this hose, 
or you could actually have a vacuum leak at the VSV. So that would require a little bit more investigation. You would need to go ahead and at least remove the vacuum hoses and test each one from the VSV and then remove the VSV itself and make sure it's airtight. You'll see all of that in this video. Now the second test that we'll do is with the key on. We don't need to run the engine, but just put the key to the on position, that position right before it will turn over. And that is going to energize a normally functioning VSV. Turn the key to the on position will energize it. And when the VSV is energized, it should not allow vacuum to make it all the way over no matter what. So in that case, any vacuum that we apply here on the yellow hose, we should be able to hold vacuum. So I'll go inside and turn the key to the on position and then we'll, we will repeat that first test. So you remember when we did this test the first time with this open here, we could not hold vacuum. Now with this open and the key in the on position, the VSV is energized, so we will be able to hold vacuum. And the reason we can hold vacuum is that the VSV is preventing the connection to this hose. So this is a good result for the key on. Now what I'll do is I'll go in, I'll turn the key off, and you'll see that we will lose all that vacuum. So you see that we lost all that vacuum, and that's because by turning the key off, I turned the VSV off. When the VSV is off, it, it is connecting this port to this port. This port is open to atmosphere because I didn't have my finger over it, and that's why, that's why we lost the vacuum there. So if your VSV failed that test, meaning that with this white band hose open, and the cue onto the yellow band hose with the key in the on position. If you are not able to pull vacuum like that, that means one of two things. It either means that you have a, a massive vacuum leak in this hose here, the yellow band hose, or what it most likely is is that your VSV is broken and that it's, um, it's broken in the open position, which is the non-energized position. So when you're trying to pull vacuum on it, even though it is energized, it's not responding. It's acting as if it's not energized. It's acting as if it's off. Now, a second ago, I said two possible causes if your VSV fails this test, but um, I should say three, because since the VSV is acting as if it's not getting power, and that's why it's failing the test, there is the possibility that it really is not getting power. And to rule that out, what I would do is take the VSV off and bench test it. If it passed the bench test okay, then I would go back to the circuit, there's a blue connector you'll see later, it's just got two, it's just got two um, connections on it. One is for power and one is ground. I would just hook a meter up to that, turn the key on the ignition, just to the on position like we just did. And if that was getting power, if that was getting power at that connection and the VSV was performing well on the bench, then I'd go back to maybe suspecting the VSV because sometimes they get old and they can act up and they can have intermittent failures. And that goes for all the testing on the VSV. Sometimes they pass the bench tests, but they, they get out in the field, they act crazy, and they don't do so well. The electrical circuit for the VSV is just power and ground, and it's the ECU that supplies the ground. So that means there's a possibility that you could have a bad ECU in that case. I think that would be pretty rare. I would be looking more at all of the wiring on the circuit back there, the grounds and everything on the way back. Maybe the VSV really isn't getting power, so that would be another thing to check if you failed this test. So those are a few uh, simple tests that you can do to help troubleshoot the VSV before you go in and, and buy a new one and remove it and go through all the trouble. So if possible, try to get your VSV out and bench test it. You'll see that in the later part of this video. So we'll just reconnect this yellow hose to, to the Q port here on the vacuum modulator. And the white hose goes to this port here on the AGR valve. And we'll go ahead and dive in and get this video started about the VSV relocation. This is a four-wheel drive RAV4, which is the harder to reach version for the VSV. But you can also follow these steps for your two-wheel drive. The easiest way to locate the VSV, whether it's a two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive, is to go to this part here. This is the vacuum modulator. Again, that's the EGR valve. This is the vacuum modulator. And you can see there are two hoses. There's a hose coming from the EGR valve and from the VAC modulator, and they're going down. And you can see the hose over there. If you follow these down, these connect into the VSV. Now on a two-wheel drive RAV4, you can just sneak under, go up on ramps or something, sneak under, and you can reach it from below. On the four-wheel drive RAV4 like this one, it's not so easy because there's a transfer case and 
the uh, CV axle is different on this side and all that, so it's um, a little bit easier to reach it if you go ahead and lift up the vehicle and take this wheel off, this passenger wheel off. With this passenger side wheel off, you can see we can go in there. That's my light. I've got it positioned so that we can see that VSV brightly shining. It's right there. It's that blue connector. It's the best I'm going to be able to do with the camera, such that it's not in my way, but you can sort of see what I'm doing. You're not going to be able to see this probably at all when you're reaching in here. But that blue connector, to undo that blue electrical connector, you're going to reach in here and you get on it. And on the, um, on the side that faces you, so I don't know if you can see this, but where my thumb is, there's a little clasp. Be careful because it can be old. So there it is. There's the electrical. And now there's also a 10 millimeter bolt. If you just reach right above it, you'll be able to feel it. Okay, there you can just see in the shadow that 12 millimeter. That's what we need to get on next. And perhaps now you can see why many a times these VSVs just get left behind. It's very difficult to get a tool on that 12 millimeter bolt. Sometimes the bolt is so corroded or rusty that it won't budge. Or if it does budge, the head might get stripped or it might even break. And removing a broken bolt from that hole would be a nightmare because there's just no room. But the good news is there's nothing special about this location. It's just a mounting location. So there's another place that's much easier to reach where you can move the VSV. The electrical will reach with enough slack over to the new location and so will the vacuum hoses. So if that's what you want to do at this point in the video, if you're not even going to bother taking your VSV out to test it, if you just have a new VSV that you want to install, you can skip ahead. I'll show some timestamps to the later part of the video where I'm reinstalling this VSV at that new location. All you got to do is reach in there and work the little electrical, that blue electrical that we just uh, disconnected, just work it over towards the firewall. And then there's two hoses, two vacuum hoses that go onto the VSV, you can slip those off. If they won't come off, you can cut them off because you'll actually have plenty of slack in the hoses to move to the new location. And then there's one 10 millimeter bolt, it's not difficult to reach on the hose bracket that you need to remove so that you can get the hoses over towards the new location. That's all shown in the video. So look at the pinned comment of the timestamps to skip ahead. On the other hand, if you want to remove this VSV and test it, keep watching because I'm going to remove this VSV and I will show you all the steps to test it. So let's do that next. I'll show you how to get a tool on that. 12 millimeter and we'll get this VSV out of here and on the bench. This is the uh, transfer case dipstick. So I'm gonna remove this dipstick just to reduce the chance that I might break it and get a little bit more room in there. This pops out, just pull that glass back. It's a short dipstick. I'll just slip a bag over that. To get better access in here, I'm gonna disconnect the tie rod here from the knuckle and that'll allow me to pull this out and push it way back here so I can reach my arm in there a lot better and get tools in there better. To remove this, you see we have a cotter key, so I'm gonna fold that cotter key, and then there's just this castellated nut. This is a 17, 17 millimeter on here, and um, I'm just gonna go ahead and use my mini impact, but you can get that off with the ratchet. There it is there. Now, if you have a tie rod end remover, it's a tool I like. It's um, AutoZone 27276 is the, the rental number on it, OEM Tools. I really like that tool, but it's not available right now. So we're gonna have to go to plan B, which is to tap this out, but we don't wanna mess that up so much. So to get around that, we'll put the, um, put the castle nut on, put it, on upside down if you can sometimes it'll catch the thread sometimes it won't looks like this one will okay and then I'm gonna smack I'm gonna smack the bottom of this to drive the um, to drive the tie rod up there it is now I had this tie rod out just a couple of few months ago because I did the inner tie rod boot so yours might not so be so easy to bang out that's why that tool is really handy so get that tool if you can't bang yours out. But now with this out, we just pull this up. See, with this disconnected here, I can pull it over there so that I have more room to put my arm and tools in there. So. Yeah, the bungee is holding the tie rod back. I just tied it off to the wheel here. 
And now let's have a lo little closer look in here. You can see it's a little bit more room. Way up there, way up there, that's where we're going. Try to get in there and get a tool on it now. So just feel for this blue thing and then uh, reach right above it as that bolt to 12 millimeter. First thing I'm gonna go in with is my little kit here from Gear Ranch. Love this little kit. I think I got this for like 12 bucks or something. Came with all this. And what's nice about this little kit is you can see it is solo profile. It's got a ton of teeth too. So you're gonna see it's so tight in there. You're not gonna get a whole lot to swing. So you need your best uh you, you need your, your, your ratchets that have the most teeth, the best arc swing options. So this little 12 millimeter setup here, I'm gonna try to get in there on that. But what happens is like I mentioned, um, you get corrosion between the steel and the aluminum and it just becomes so hard to budge that bolt. You'll see that they can strip very easily, very easily. So this isn't much, um, this isn't much leverage at all. So we'll see, sometimes you get lucky. All right, there you can see it on there. And you don't have a whole lot of room, but go ahead and at this point you can try to turn it open. They can be pretty tight. I'm not going to be able to film it. There's just no room, but I'm going to give it a shot with this. Okay, no luck on that. I can't, I can't generate enough force to turn this with this short little lever arm. Maybe you can. Uh, so we're going to have to move to another option. Okay, plan B. I'm going in with 3 inch plus 1. It's a good idea to tape your socket. To your extension if you don't have locking extensions because if you drop your socket up in there you're gonna have a hard time finding it and so let's try that where did that thing go where did it go there it is okay it's there i'm doing this just totally fine because you're not going to be able to see there it is. Okay, so I am on that bolt. It's going to be hard to get on that and not, not come off the facet. Let's see. Okay. Okay, it's just not happening with that ratchet because I can't get, I can't get it, I can't generate enough force on it at that funky angle. Maybe you'll be able to, but, um, I'm going to see if I can't fit my air ratchet in there. I want to be able to use this space back here too. So I'm just going to remove this. This is a, it looks like that might be a 12 millimeter. Uh, it's just a brace for this hose for the power steering. To be clear though, you see I'm going on that top one, which is the 12 millimeter, not the bottom one, which is actually some type of clamp there for the tie rod in and it's a 14 millimeter. So a fair amount of patience and some finagling, but I was actually able to get my air ratchet in there with the uh, long extension onto, onto the bolt. So I'm going to try to use this air ratchet because I just can't get any swing in there. Yeah, there you can see the other end of the extension and uh, I'm on that bolt there. So I'm going to really press in and see if I can't break this free. Let's see if I get lucky. All right, that got it. You can see I'm still, the uh, socket is still on there, but you can see it, uh, it loosened that up. So I'm gonna get this ratchet out of here, get the air ratchet out of here and take that out by hand. So using that technique with the air ratchet, if you have a setup similar, you actually don't have to take this, this uh, tie rod end out. You can leave it in place because I stuck it back in place. You do wanna remove the fastener for this bracket here and then lift this up and put it on the other side. And then that gives you a spot to put your air ratchet. I took the air ratchet out, but I just wanted to show the path that I took there. You see, um, I'm between the electrical harness and let me see if you can see that, that there, that electrical harness. See how the extension goes between the electrical harness and then that black bar to whatever that is, some type of brace. And you can see the nut on top of the blue connector where that was. And then I'm kind of just chilling out on top of this, um, this hose here for the 
power steering pump. That was the setup that, that allowed me to get in there with the air ratchet. There's the setup for the extension with the socket on there. A little bit over nine inches. And there you can see the length is about ten and a half once you got the uh, air ratchet on. So if you have a setup that's close to this, that might be a good bet if you can't budge that bolt because it's too tight or if it's real rusted out. Now that it's loose, I can just go in and move that bolt by hand. And there is the bolt. So there it is, the elusive VSV. At this point, you can either try to undo those hoses the one with the yellow band there and then the other one on the other side. And pull the VSV out. Or you can keep the hoses on and pull the, pull the VSV out with the hoses. That's what I prefer to do. It takes one more step. The one little extra step is we just have to take out one more fastener. You follow those two hoses. They go back to a bracket. And that bracket has one bolt on it. See that bolt there? Just undo that fastener and then uh, that'll allow you to uh, pull the hoses out down through the bottom and pull the VSV out. Because we'll just slip the hoses off the, off the vacuum modulator and the EGR up top. So I'm going to take that one out next. There you can see I got the wrench on. This is the 10 millimeter. That wrench is just hanging there. You can reach it from here. It's not difficult to reach. So just break that free and take that fastener out. There's that fastener. So I'm going to disconnect this hose here on the vacuum modulator. It's okay, there's that hose. And then on the EGR, I'm going to remove this hose here. There it is there. And then I'm just going to take it out of that clip. And I'm going to just slide it under this hose that's behind there just to get it loose. Just like this. I'm pulling on the EGR hose, that one. And now we'll be able to pull that out. With that one ton millimeter undone for the bracket on the hoses and the hose is disconnected up top, we can grab the VSV and pull it out from the bottom. Okay, now if your hoses on your VSV are not marked, then go ahead and mark them before you remove them. See how this has a yellow bar? And it's going on this side, and then the one going in this side has a white bar. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those. Um, don't break this. It's all plastic and old. So that's a good start. And I'll go in like this. Just kind of push it off. Okay, now I can do the other one. Okay, that's good. I'll go in. And there's the VSV. Let's go take this to the bench. Now we are going to test the VSV. It's very easy to test the VSV and this is a good VSV here. So you'll see what it should look like. The first thing we're going to do is check resistance across the terminals. You see we only have two terminals there. So we're going to check resistance and we are looking for 33 to 39 ohms. So I'll just take these end connectors and slip them on here just as it makes it a little easier okay and then here's the meter we are on we're on ohms ohms and let's check what we got here looking for 33 to 39 ohms Oops. so you can see and there we have 37.8 so we just call it 38, so we are good. So next test, we're gonna check to see that there's no continuity between each terminal and the body. So we are going to, just as shown here, we're just gonna check terminal to body and then terminal to body. And we want that to come back as infinite resistance, which is no continuity. So we will go terminal to body and you see that is an open circuit no continuity that's good that's what we want 
Same with this one. Terminal to body. Open circuit, that is good. Now we will check that air flows from port E to port G. E is this one, say E, and then G is that one. So we're gonna blow in here and make sure air comes out that way. You can use an air compressor. I'm just gonna slip a clean hose on this one side and blow on the other end and you'll see air is coming out, so that is good. And for the last test, we're just going to throw 12 volts across the terminals there, you can see. And we'll do the same thing, we'll blow air in at E, but instead of coming out at G, when there's power to this thing, we want the air to go out the filter. So we'll just cycle, cycle on off, on off to C. So when there's no power, it should blow out this way. When there is power, it should blow out that way. All right, there's my setup there. You said I just have a regular car battery. And um, I just wrapped the hang around there to put my alligator clip on. And on the VSV, I will go ahead and connect my positive. And we're going, according to the picture here, we are going positive. I don't think it matters, but we'll just do it that way. Positive here. So I'm just going to get on there. Make sure you cover your alligator clips with um, electrical tape so that you don't accidentally short the battery down here. I'm going to tap onto this and simultaneously blow air through here and then I'm going to expect air to come out there. Okay, here we go. So there you can see that's how that works. Um, you'll be able to feel, feel the air coming out here faintly, but mostly you'll hear that cycling, that, that clicking. One other test you can do on the VSV, if you happen to have a vacuum pump, is to make sure that there are no breaks in the channels between these two uh, ports. So you should be able to hold vacuum between the ports. So what you can do is just cover one of the ports up with your finger, and if you have a vacuum pump, you can just slide this on hook the under, other end of the hose up to the vacuum pump and we're just going to make sure that we can get that that's sealed in there and that we don't have any air leaks inside the VSV. So if it holds vacuum, it means it doesn't have any air leaks. And as you can see, it's holding vacuum quite well. So release that. And that's just another test you can do. Now I should mention that just because a VSV passes the pinch test, doesn't mean that it is okay because there are plenty of cases where the VSV will pass a bench test but then in the real world for this or that reason as it heats up or something's changing it'll start to fail intermittently and that can cause that can cause that P0401 code so it's always a good idea to test the VSV if you have it out uh, and obviously if it fails you're going to want to replace it but unfortunately, the bench test is not perfect. And so just because your VSV passes the bench test doesn't mean that it's not the component. So if you end up back to square one after having tested the VSV on the bench and maybe you even replaced some other components and you're running out of things to replace and you think your VSV tests well, you might think about go ahead and replacing the VSV because like I said, a lot of times it will fail intermittently due to some type of environmental conditions, then you won't be able to simulate that on the bench test. But if it fails the bench test, definitely replace it. If you need to replace your VSV, you can see there is the part number 909101100. And this is an ASIN. This is an ASIN VSV. So if you can get an ASIN VSV, they last a long, long time. This is the original one, the RAV4 is 20 years old well over 200,000 miles and it's still good. All right, now you will either be putting in a new VSV or you might be reinstalling your same VSV. And if you want to put it in a new location that's a little bit easier to reach, what you can do is use this spot right down there. See that fastener there? You won't have a fastener if you don't have ABS and you also won't have those brake lines running there if you don't have ABS, but you will have a threaded hole even if you don't have ABS. So you can take that fastener out if you have ABS and use it or just get go buy one and use that hole if you don't have ABS. So that's a 10 millimeter. You can see it's really not too difficult to get a tool on there.
get a little more space since we're going to be reaching down in this area to relocate that VSB. Um, we can remove the battery. That'll give a lot more space. These are 10 millimeter if you have your original Toyota terminals. So we'll just start with the, the negative, the black first. Just pull it off and get it tucked in to the side. And then we can do the positive. Pull that off. Be sure not to bridge the terminals with the tool while you're working. And then this brace, this is, these are both 10 millimeters as well. Then with the battery removed, you remove these four fasteners. Those are all 10 millimeter, and this tray will come up to give a little better access. And we got more work in the room. Put that tray out. Now if you're going to mount your new or uh, old VSV at that location, bend this tab, just get on this with some pliers and bend this tab just up so that it's flush with this side so that you can get it fastened on properly. Now if you're going to reroute it before you put the VSV there, just so you have a little bit more room to reach under here, go ahead and grab the electrical. And there's no trick to it, it's just a matter of patience and fiddling around. Look down here and you'll be able to see it. See it right there? See a little blue? Okay, I have my hand on the connector there. You can see I got it up a little bit from below and then I can feel that it's just a little bit caught. So you just have to patiently bring it up. Don't break it. Okay, there it is. So you can see that that's going to reach well right there. So we'll just leave that there. Just remove this. That is a 10 millimeter. That one's not very tight. And this is an M6 by 1, about 15 millimeters long. So if you don't have ABS and you don't have one of these, go to the store and buy one of these if you want to mount it there. Now we'll grab that VSV. I'll get the electrical plugged in first so you can get the orientation right. Where'd that electrical go? Like this. Looks like it will just reach. So let's see. Okay, you can see I just have it loosely on there and that electrical will fit just fine. It only fits one way. You can see how that line will align on the top. Before we go any further there, let's grab the the other end of the hoses and you remember it's just these two so you can follow this down and uh, that little bracket oh look mine came up but if yours doesn't come up this little bracket that's the fastener we took out earlier just um just reach down there you can reach from above and just get it loose so now we have this up here get these hoses hooked up the hose if yours is still marked with the yellow uh, which is the one that comes from the vacuum modulator that hose goes into this fitting here nearest to the plug so that goes right there and then the white one goes into the black fitting right there all right just like that and just in case yours were not marked don't worry. The white one, this is the white one here, that plugs in nearest to the filter. If we follow the white one up, that is to the EGR valve and the yellow one, yellow. If we follow the yellow one down from the vacuum modulator, that goes to the other side, the side closest to the plug. So that's the right setup for that. Make sure they're on there really well. Hopefully you can see that. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. It only goes one way. There's a little line on the top. And we'll get that plugged in and then get it tacked down so we know we have it in the right spot. Then make sure it snaps. Come on now. There it is. Okay, snap. Make sure it snaps. All right. Now we can go ahead and fasten that 10 millimeter down. There it is in the new position. I got that 10 millimeter tacked down and I moved this hose so it went on top of this like that. And you see you got plenty of slack on the hose, but I'm gonna change this just a little, whoops. Change this just a little up here. I'm gonna unplug both of these. And I'm just gonna put this under here so it's a little, a little more streamlined. 
I'm going to keep the um, keep all this this uh, heat protection on the hoses because you don't want them to get damaged because it might get a, get a little hot back here. I'm trying to route these vacuum hoses in the in the best way here, and so I'm going to actually just take this off of here so I can flip it around and then put it on that bolt back there. That'll be a good place for it to go. So to get this out, get under. Get under there and pull, pull it back there. All right, the plan is here. I want to reuse that fastener there, that 10 millimeter, with this little bracket from that, um, that little support right there. So I need this to go flat, but I need that to go out. So I need it to go this way. So this triangular piece here, I need to bend that. I'm going to try to bend that back um, or even break it off. I'm just going to try to bend this back. It's okay if it breaks. Okay. I just need it flat so I can get that fastener in. And now I'm going to bend this part up so that's flat. So I will now move that 10 millimeter fastener there. I hooked the hoses up here to give myself an idea of where I wanted that to go. And I think that'll work. So this will be my final shape that I'm going to go in with. Like that. And then this is where that bracket's going to clip on. So I'll go ahead and reinstall this. Okay, that's in. Let's see how that will work now. Cool. That'll work real well. Get that hose right where I want it. But that'll work. So yellow to the vacuum modulator and white to the EGR valve. There is the new location for the VSV, and just to give you an idea how I decided to route these hoses, you see this one and that one, I didn't want any crazy turns on them, so those go over that way, up and to here, and then that, we're using that, that bracket there for a new use, and then up to the back modulator and to the EGR valve. Now just to play it safe on that electrical for the VSV at the new location, I'm going to take a little piece of this. As you can see, this is heat shield. It's the same as this stuff here. But this is um, the cheaper version you can get at Harbor Freight. Get a pack for like four bucks and you get two different sizes. This is the bigger size. So I'm just going to cut a piece about that long. And then um, you can see it opens on the back like that. So you can just slip it right over the wire. You don't have to unplug it. Uh, you just slip it over the wire and then just wrap a little bit of electrical tape there. I don't think this is totally necessary, but seeing as I have it, I'm just going to go ahead and do it for that little stretch of the electrical that uh, runs nearest to the intake. There you can see, I just did that little part right there. Just give it a little extra protection. I just knocked, I just un knocked this out. This is the MAP sensor. Um, if this is disconnected, the, the vehicle won't start. It'll just shutter and shutter install. So working in this area, if you accidentally did this, just push this right back in, just like that MAP. You can see that just goes right to the right to the intake. So we're done up here. We can go ahead and put this battery tray back in and get the battery in. And this was the one with those four 10 millimeters. So we can put the battery back in. And remember to put the red on that, that side. Red's on this side, black's on this side. And put the strap in. Let's see, I need a new strap. Careful you don't bridge the Careful that you don't bridge the um, terminals when you put this in. When you're doing the front one, make sure the bottom gets underneath the tray like that so it'll go in real tight. Now we can hook it up. We'll start with the red. And this is a 10 millimeter if you still have your original Toyota terminals. You want to get this on there nice and tight. Don't want those connections. That's good. And now we'll do the negative. Get this one on nice and tight, also 10 millimeter. Alright, and that'll do that. Now we'll go below and finish up. We gotta put this little one back in that we removed for that bracket for the vacuum hoses, and that's the one that goes on that little knob that kind of pokes out on the bottom of the intake manifold. Right there, that's right there, right there. 
we have to put it back in because it's also serving to hold the brace for that. And there's that bolt back in place. If you decided to put your VSV back up there, where the fastener goes into the head there, if you decided to put it back there, just backtrack the steps, I would put some anti-seize on the threads and I would get a new fastener, a new bolt, because um, those suckers are tough. If you disconnected that there, then I just need to take that, put it on the other side, and run that 12 millimeter fastener through there. That's what I mean with that bracket to get it back in, back in that position. And this is that fastener. I don't know why it's so long. It's 12 millimeter. So there's the 12 millimeter back in place. And now I'll replace the dipstick. Dipstick just goes in and then snaps behind that clasp like that. Lastly here, if you undid your tie rod, we'll get that back in place. And just get this in and down. And that was this castellated nut here. And torque on this nut is 36 foot pounds. Okay, and we'll replace that cotter key. I'm using uh, 1 8 inch by 1 and a quarter. The length isn't so important because you can always cut it. So I can cut that. Okay, with the tie rod back in, dipstick back in, that fastener back in, uh, we're good down here. We can go ahead and put the wheel on and drop it. Torque on the wheel lug nuts is 76 foot pounds. All right, back up top, final checks. Make sure you got your battery terminals both in nice and tight in all these vacuum hoses. Yeah, this one is the one that we disconnected and this one there. Just make sure that these are all still connected. There's also one that runs from the bottom of the vacuum modulator to the EGR valve. Make sure that didn't get dislocated or anything in the course of working around there. Also, this MAP, like I mentioned, I knocked this off when I was working. So make sure you didn't knock this MAP hose off. If you did, just put it back on there. And that'll do it. Everything is back in place. The VSV is in its new location. I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope it solved your P0401, whatever you needed to do. Thanks for watching and good luck with your repair.